now you know about the parapharyngeal space its boundaries then uh, the relations etc and if this is parapharyngeal space and if there is collection of pus in this parapharyngeal space it becomes a parapharyngeal abscess okay this is a very uh, serious medical condition potentially fatal condition and you should have a prompt diagnosis and treatment for this parapharyngeal abscess if you are not uh, treating it properly there is a chance of losing your patient and also this is important for theory purpose also because this can be asked as a structured essay question so a collection of pus inside the parapharyngeal space is called parapharyngeal abscess so this can happen in any age group and what are the causes of this uh, so one is definition i already told you the second is etiology or causes what are the causes the most common or the commonest cause is and tonsil is a uh, immediate relation of this parapharyngeal space so tonsillitis again acute tonsillitis again peritonsillitis or a peritonsillar abscess or a quincy can lead to a parapharyngeal abscess or it can be also caused by any perforating or uh, foreign word inside the pharynx so one is a tonsillitis uh, think about the relation then the causes will be easy so tonsillitis acute tonsillitis or a peritonsillitis or a peritonsillar abscess or any foreign bodies in the pharynx penetrating foreign bodies or it can be due to a trauma because of nasotracheal intubation okay then um, also due to it can happen as a complication of mastoiditis also okay cysts and fistulas of branchial origin okay internal cysts and fistulas of branchial origin can also lead to a parapharyngeal abscess risk is high in case of uh, immunocompromised patients hiv aids then long standing uncontrolled diabetic patients then chronic granulomatous disorders then non hodgkins lymphoma patients aplastic anemia etc okay so you know the causative uh, causes of this parapharyngeal abscess and high risk group okay next is bacteriology of uh, parapharyngeal abscess bacteriology in the bacteriology it is actually it is a polymicrobial uh, infection both gram positive and gram negative organisms can cause a parapharyngeal abscess must, but most commonly seen ones are streptococcus viridens and klebsiella pneumonia and pseudomonas aeruginosa is more commonly seen in association with the hiv patients okay so strept viridens streptococcus viridens klebsiella pneumonia and pseudomonas aeruginosa these two are most commonly seen in association with the parapharyngeal abscess then what are the clinical features okay after bacteriology comes the clinical feature and in the clinical features see parapharyngeal this is parapharyngeal space so abscess is getting collected here so it can cause a, it can bulge medially or it can bulge laterally also isn't it if it is causing a bulge it is uh, pushing uh, medially this will cause tonsillar bulge tonsil will bulge this will push tonsil medial bulge of the tonsil or medial displacement of the tonsil will happen so the clinical features will be almost similar to a peritonsillar abscess or a quincy i already uh, explained the clinical features of quincy in an earlier class so please see that but the main difference between a quincy and a bulge of tonsil caused by a parapharyngeal abscess is that in quincy there is more of edema of the soft palate edema of this area and the bulge is more in in the upper pole of tonsil in case of quincy in quincy there is edema of the soft palate and bulge is more on the upper pole but in case of a parapharyngeal abscess this bulge will be more in the lower pole okay and the edema of the soft palate is comparatively less in case of an parapharyngeal abscess so it can push 
tonsil medially causing bulge of tonsil more in the lower pole and edema of the soft palate will be less compared to that of Quincy and if it is causing lateral bulge there will be a, a firm or a tender fluctuant swelling in the neck but in case of Quincy it was the JD node or uh, jugular digestive lymph nodes are enlarged in case of Quincy but in case of a parapharyngeal abscess there will be a fluctuant tender swelling in the neck will be seen Okay, so that is the main clinical features and main differentiating feature between a quincy and a parapharyngeal abscess. And also along with this, there will be trismus, difficulty in opening the mouth. Then what will happen? There will be dysphagia, there will be drooling of saliva, everything associated with this will be there. And also constitutional features like fever, severe tiredness, myalgia, all that will happen. Okay, so they are the clinical features. Okay. Next heading is differential diagnosis. So the differential diagnosis means the swellings, other swellings which can mimic a parapharyngeal abscess. Okay. So we can divide that into, differential diagnosis can be divided into three headings mainly. We can divide that into uh, infective. What are the infective conditions which can mimic? It can be either it can be a peritonsillar abscess or here is spinal cord, uh, vertebra, isn't it? So, can be a spinal tuberculosis. From here it is uh, peritonsillar abscess or from here it can mimic a spinal TB. Okay. Pods disease, tuberculosis, spinal tuberculosis. Okay. Then, the next differential diagnosis uh, headings is neoplastic, neoplasms. Which are neoplasms? That is, I already told you in the pre-styloid uh, compartment, deep lobe of parotid is coming. So, the primary tumors of deep lobe of parotid can mimic a parapharyngeal abscess. Okay. So, parotid tumors. Or it can be a uh, local spread from a tonsillar uh, malignancy or lymphomas of the tonsil. Okay. Or tonsil. So, two things are in relation to this uh, space. One is parotid and another one is tonsil. So, the primary tumors or local spread from these two can cause, uh, can mimic this. And the third main heading for in the differential diagnosis is vascular. Okay. Which all vessels are coming there? Pseudo aneurysms. In vascular, you can see here comes uh, uh, carotid artery. So, a pseudo aneurysm of the internal carotid artery or uh, another one is a lingual artery. So, in both cases, this can, uh, can be a differential diagnosis of this parapharyngeal abscess. Okay. Investigations. So, what is the investigation of choice? No doubt. CT scan is the investigation of choice for this parapharyngeal abscess. It is a gold standard in the diagnosis. Okay, so investigation is CT scan. CT scan of uh, neck. Definitely you need a contrast enhanced CT scan of neck. And if you suspect any other mastoiditis or something, you have to take a CT scan of neck or uh, head also along with neck. So CT scan of neck along with head is needed if you suspect a mastoiditis. Or if you suspect a mediastinitis, you have to take a CT scan of neck along with chest also. Okay, so CCT, uh, contrast enhanced CT scan is a gold standard. And if you are planning any surgical uh, procedures pre-operatively, you have to do a laryngeal or a pharyngeal assessment. You have to go for a flexible uh, pharyngolaryngoscopy or a 70 degree uh, rigid endoscopy to find out the inferior extent of this bulge okay inside so that is also needed or flexible uh, laryngo pharyngoscopy to find out the inferior extent of the bulge that is also needed but anyway the diagnosis you can get confirm your diagnosis by doing a uh, contrast enhanced CT scan of the neck the next heading is what is uh, treatment what is the treatment of this condition uh, without doubt, first admit the patient, hospitalize the patient and 
start on IV antibiotics. Okay. So, hospitalization and uh, admit IV antibiotics. Which are antibiotics you can give? You start empirically on penicillin groups. Either you are give, can give pencil or you can give third generation cephalosporin. We prefer cefuroxin, IV cefuroxin. Okay. Right? Along with this, if there is any fluid and electrolyte imbalance, correct that. And supportive measures like adequate hydration. Then if there is pain, analgesics and inflammatory like that. And uh, if there is an intraoral bulge or an external bulge, you can aspirate the pus and it can be sent for cultural sensitivity. And once the report is, uh, uh, has been um, given, then you can change over to appropriate antibiotics. So, first of all, hospitalize the patient, start on IV antibiotic empirical uh, measures with penicillin or IV cefuroxin and aspirate the pus through externally or intraorally and send for cultural sensitivity and change over to specific antibiotic according to cultural sensitivity result. Along with the antibiotic, correction of fluid of fluid and electrolyte imbalance if any and supportive measures. And surgery is needed and what are the indications for surgical drainage? Surgical drainage indication What are the indications of surgical drainage? The, you, are, you have started uh, medicine and the patient is not responding to medicine uh, to these conservative measures after 48 hours. Even after 48 hours. You can wait for 48 hours with these conservative measures. Except there is no airway compromise. In, before 48 hours, if the patient is deteriorating that, uh, drastically or if there is an airway compromise, the bulge is so much or it is bursting that it is going to cause an airway compromise. Definitely go with a tracheostomy and surgical drainage. Okay. Otherwise, you can wait for 48 hours with this uh, conservative measures. And even after 48 hours, patient is not improving. Or before four, even before 48 hours, patient is deteriorating along with the airway compromise. Immediately go with the surgical measures like if there is airway compromise do a tracheostomy under local anesthesia and then uh, go for an incision and drainage under general anesthesia. Ideally you can go through an external drainage because if it is bulging here externally put an incision at the level of hyoid one. I already told you that this paraphalangeal abscess the apex is pointed towards the greater horn of hyoid bone. So you can put an incision at the level of hyoid bone and through the carotid sheath upwards you can reach the parapharyngeal space or internally if it is bulging bulge is definite if, if there is a definite bulge inter, intra orally you can put an incision over the bulge and uh, can do a drainage okay so you you should know this indication for a surgical drainage even after 48 hours of conservative measures patient is not improving or before 48 hours if there is airway compromise or deterioration then you can go for an incision and drainage and it is usually done uh, externally and if there is a definitive bulge intraorally you can put in a, or incision over that bulge also okay so this is a treatment if you have uh, image guided technology in your hospital you can do this aspiration or uh, incision and drainage under image guided uh, methods okay uh, complications if you are not doing a treatment, correct treatment or you are not prompt in diagnosis and treatment, this can go for complications. So what are the complications of parapharyngeal abscess? It's also very important. You can easily tell the complications also by looking into this diagram that is anatomy. See here is carotid sheath. In the carotid sheath there is internal jugular vein. If there is involvement of the internal jugular vein, it can lead to thrombosis of the internal jugular vein which is called the Lemire syndrome. Okay, Lemire syndrome. Then what will happen? There is carotid artery. So the carotid artery uh, can go for a thrombosis 
or it can go for a pseudo aneurysm or it can go for a blowout. Okay. This blowout is very fatal. Even the patient will not be there for you to treat. Okay. So carotid artery thrombosis or internal carotid artery pseudo aneurysm or a carotid blowout can happen. Then what will happen? This can go through the extend through the carotid sheath. I told about the Lincoln's Highway in a uh, anat along with the anatomy of parapharyngeal space. So it will lead to mediastinitis, superior mediastinitis. Okay, it's also a very dangerous condition. You have to go for an immediate drainage also. Then if it is causing bulging internally, what can happen? So it can burst internally or it can cause severe bulge into the uh, inside the pharynx and or uh, oropharynx leading to uh, airway compromise. Okay, airway problem. So in that case, you have to go for an immediate tracheostomy under local anesthesia, then go for drainage of this abscess. Then what can happen? This can also cause a cervical uh, necrotizing fasciitis. Okay, cervical necrotizing fasciitis and uh, leading to uh, pharyngeal perforation. Okay. So internally a cervical necrotizing fasciitis causing pharyngeal perforation or externally it can cause uh, descending uh, necrotizing fasciitis of the neck. Okay. So it can internally it can cause cervical necrotizing fasciitis and also in the neck it can cause uh, descending necrotizing fasciitis in the neck. It is uh, retropharyngeal abscess. Okay. Here can go to retropharyngeal space leading to retropharyngeal abscess and all the complications of that that I will explain in another class. Then in children uh, with a parapharyngeal abscess, this can cause an symptomatic hyponatremia. How it happens? Hyponatremia in children by a syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion. Okay. In children, this can cause uh, symptomatic hyponatremia by an SIADH syndrome. And in that cases, the child can present with the fits also. Uh, seizures can happen. So, all these are the complications of this uh, parapharyngeal abscess. So, in sum to summarize, we uh, uh, learned about what is a parapharyngeal abscess. That is uh, collection of pus inside the parapharyngeal space. Then the causes of that mainly from tonsillitis and the peritonsillar abscess etc. Bacteriology mainly a polymicrobial uh, uh, infection mainly by strep tuviridens, klebsiella pneumonia etc. In clinical features then the differential diagnosis mainly under the headings of uh, infective, uh, neoplastic and vascular. So think about this and uh, uh, tell the differential diagnosis. Investigation, the gold standard in the uh, uh, investigation is uh, CT scan. Uh, contrast enhanced CT scan. Treatment both conservative and if it is conservative is not working even after 48 hours go for a surgical drainage and these are the complications of parapharyngeal abscess.